starting um, on our first marker in our series, Identifying Evil Spirits. And we are looking at the markers uh, by which you can identify that there is an evil spirit at work, either in someone else or in you, um, in the things that are in your mind. And so um, we're looking at marker number one tonight, which is simply the spirit of Antichrist. I'm going to show you from the scriptures how you're going to identify uh, the spirit of Antichrist when you're dealing with this. So let's start out by um, remembering the fact that our war is against spirits. It's not against people. If you think that your war is against flesh and blood, you're going to lose the war because you can't kill a spirit by killing the uh, piece of flesh that is, it's expressing itself through, okay? Because you can kill that piece of flesh, you can destroy the person that that spirit is using, um, but that spirit will just move on and express itself through another weak vessel um, that is able to be controlled, okay? So um, we're fighting against the spirits, and that takes wisdom. And it's a wisdom that's beyond what we can figure out, okay? It's a wisdom that we can only get by simply looking to God's Word and believing Him, like a little child would believe their parents, you know? The spiritual realm and all of those things, it's a, it's a very big world, and we can't see very much of it at all. In fact, a lot of it we can't see at all. Um, so we have to trust, and that's what faith means. Faith means... You know, just like you would trust your own father, you place your trust in God and say, okay, whatever you say is, I believe you. If you say that I pray and that it's going to change things, then I believe you. I don't know how it gets from A to Z, but I know you said if I do this, then that's what's going to result. Okay, so we pray. We use the weapons that God has given us. We do it by faith. That just means we don't know how it works all the time, but it does because he said so. So we just trust him. And as we move forward in maturity, he can explain those things to us more fully, okay? But we are going to have success in this battle if we will just follow his simple instructions, whether we understand them or not. So let's read Ephesians 6.12. It says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil, in the heavens so we're fighting evil it's a very noble thing to do okay if you feel like you're a small person if you feel like what you do when you get up in the morning and when you go about your day doesn't really make a difference if you're in a rut of sin and you think that you know even even if you were successful it doesn't really matter nobody cares about you you're not going to make a big impact on the world please understand that that is a lie what you're fighting is a spiritual force and if you can overcome um, those spiritual forces of evil in your own life, then you have overcome them, period. And Jesus was able to do that and look at the impact that he made, okay? He didn't have money. He didn't have a position of, uh, of authority in this world. He wasn't respected by the powers that be in this world. I'm talking about Jesus, the Jesus that walked in human history, okay? Whether you believe he was the son of God or not, you can't argue with the historical man and the impact that he made on this world. But how did he do that? Did he do that by fighting the people um, whom Satan was able to work through, work evil through? No. he did. It says a bruised reed he wouldn't even break. He didn't use a sword to do it. He used wisdom. And he listened to the Holy Spirit. He allowed the Holy Spirit to lead him into places where he would learn how to deny his flesh, to say no to that sinful nature by the power of the Holy Spirit, and to submit himself to God's will which included sacrificing himself for us on the cross, okay? Jesus said we have to take up our cross too. Why? Because God wants to punish us? No, he took our punishment, but because he wants us to overcome these powers of evil that are at work in our lives. So the battle that you are fighting, well, even if it seems small to you, it is epic. And the Bible says that all of heaven is watching you. There's a great cloud of witnesses that is watching your race. So it matters what we do, okay? When we're talking about identifying evil spirits, these spirits may be expressing themselves through people that you love. They may be expressing themselves um, through, uh, you know, someone just temporarily. In just one moment, one statement can carry a spirit of Antichrist. It doesn't mean that we're judging the person as someone who's necessarily going to go to hell because the truth is that anytime we, we are promoting sin or um, we're submitting to sin or, or promoting it, that we are 
um, able to be used by the spirit of Antichrist. Okay, so we're all susceptible to that. This isn't a matter of judging people. Okay, this is a matter of judging the spirit and then deciding that you're not going to submit yourself to that spirit. The first thing you have to do in order to overcome it, though, is identify it. Okay, so how do you identify the mark of the Antichrist? It's disobedience to Jesus. Okay, 1 John 4, 1 through 3 says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to determine if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus as the Christ who has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is now already in the world. And then again, 1 John 2.22 says, Who is the liar but the person who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This one is the Antichrist, the person who denies the Father and the Son. Now, if you're reading this, you may tend to think this is talking about atheists and people who don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And that's, you know, that's the spirit of Antichrist. And of course it is. If somebody is going to outright say Jesus is not the Christ, obviously that's, that's what it says. It's the spirit of Antichrist. But... You can't judge by outward appearances when you're judging spirits, okay? Especially deceptive spirits, because the Bible says that deceptive spirits, Satan, will dress themselves on the outside to look like exactly the opposite. They'll dress themselves up to look like angels of light and uh, ministers of the gospel and sheep, uh, you know, God's people. So their disguises are really good, whether it's a spirit, you know, something that's being said. Somebody may say something that sounds really good and it sounds really right and it makes a lot of sense, okay? But if it goes against the commands of Jesus, then it is the spirit of Antichrist. And you've got to get strong in identifying a lie. You've got to be able to call a lie a lie, okay? And understand that lie is going to be dressed up in something prettier. But you can unmask it if you believe God's word, okay? So the spirit of Antichrist is not always going to come looking like what it is, but it will always act like what it is, okay? So if you read this and you think that means no minister out there has a spirit of Antichrist, then understand the scripture says the opposite. Okay, there are going to be ministers that have the spirit of Antichrist, that have the spirit of Satan, that are Satan's servants. You don't judge this by words alone. When it says that every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God, it's talking about a true confession. It's not talking about just simply uh, words. Okay, we have to learn how to judge by actions or fruit, not by words. That's judging like Jesus, okay? 1 Corinthians 2.15 tells us that the spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment, or another translation says he is not understood by um, anyone else. So he's understanding, you know, what's going on around him. He's making judgments about all things. Luke 6.46 says, this is Jesus talking, and he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I tell you to do? Okay, so here's what I want to show you. The Bible says if you're a spiritual person, you're going to have to make judgments about things. You're not to judge other people. The Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. You're not to decide what, whether or not a person is going to heaven or, you know, you're not to judge another man's servant. I'm talking about God's servant, God's, you know, people that he created. It's not yours to decide whether or not they're going to make it to heaven. It is yours to decide what spirit is at work. Why? So that you yourself will not follow that wrong spirit or be influenced by it. Okay? That's the purpose. It's not to demean another person. It's not to degrade them. It's not to defame them. It's not to attack them. It's so that you can make good, informed decisions. Okay? And here we see Jesus making a judgment, and this is how he identified it. He said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I tell you to do? There are lots of people out there who will confess Jesus with their mouth, and they'll say, Yeah, he's the Christ. But then they don't do what he tells them to do. Well, it's when they don't do what he commands that they give away what spirit they're of. Okay? Because understand that the word Christ, that's talking about the anointed one. And we're told about the anointed one in Psalm chapter 2. God says, I have set up and chosen and anointed my king. And he's prophesying about this king that he is going to send to the earth to make everything right. 
Okay, this is the Christ or the Messiah. And he said, I've chosen my king. Why do the nations rage? He's going to rule with an iron scepter and nobody's going to stop it from happening. But understand it's the spirit of Antichrist that hates the fact that Jesus has the authority. So authority means that the, the subjects are going to do what the king says. Now, if you say, I'm a subject of the king, you confess it with your mouth. But then you do exactly the opposite and you follow the commands of an enemy king, which is Satan and sin then you're a traitor, you're treacherous. And the Bible says that a king's eyes are able to winnow out evil. Okay, So that's what Jesus is doing here by looking at the actions instead of the words. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I tell you to do? And that's what you as a spiritual man or woman is supposed to do as well. That's how you're to make your judgments. You look at what that thing is encouraging you to do. So <clears throat> if you're having a conversation... And you may have it dressed up in spiritual clothes, maybe. You're talking to another Christian. Maybe you want to start gossiping a little bit about someone, but you couch it in, you know, you're really concerned about that person, and then you go on to talk bad about them, right? You know how we do things. We dress it up. But you can, you can tell that is not the Spirit of God because it's disobedient to Jesus. You can dress it up all you want. Jesus said, do unto others as you want them to do unto you, okay? We don't even have to go to the gossip scriptures, to know that you don't want other people talking badly about you. You don't want other people uh, to be, you know, in conversations and not giving you the benefit of the doubt. But you're going to do that to someone else. That's just a simple example that most people do every day. Talking bad about people. Okay? So when you do that, what spirit is at work? What spirit is at work in you? It's a spirit of antichrist. But Lord, you're my king. I would never let, I would never let Satan work for me. You let Satan work for you every time you decide to disobey the command of the king because you're denying that he's the Christ, okay? If you really believe that he's the Christ, you will do what he tells you to do. And if you love him, you'll do what he tells you to do. Loyal servants, people who really are confessing him as the Christ, are going to obey. Let me just read it to you one more time, Matthew 7:21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. How does the spirit of Antichrist do this? How does Satan usually come to you to encourage you to disobey God? Okay, if you're a Christian, Satan won't usually come, you know, telling you who he is. He's not usually going to come with his horns out. He's going to come using spiritual Christian words or, you know, coming to you in a way that you can kind of swallow the lie. So how does he do it? How do people who are coming, uh, ministers, for example, who are coming by the spirit of the Antichrist, how do they get you to disobey God in the name of God? How do they do that? By nullifying God's word. And Jesus said this is what the Pharisees did in Mark 7, 13. He says, thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Okay, so he called them on the carpet. He said, you're using your tradition and your, you know, your position and everybody respects you. You're using that, that influence, to tell people they don't have to obey God. And why? Because, you know, you want to protect your right to your money and your right to your, the, the sins that you indulge yourself in. You have to be on the lookout for a, a spirit, a person, or a thought that comes to you to tell you, listen to this. Jesus didn't mean what he said, okay? You don't actually have to do what Jesus said to do because it doesn't really apply today or surely he meant something else that's a little bit too harsh or I don't understand it, so, it, you know, since it doesn't make sense to me, then I don't have to obey it. You guys understand that when the king speaks, that if you are his subject, you will jump to attention and you will do what he says and you will do it with all of your heart and with all of your strengths. He is a great king, you guys. And it is no small thing for someone to come into his presence and be flippant about disobedience. Okay? He does have a sword. And we need to learn to have the fear of the Lord when we're talking about the Christ. Jesus is so kind to us. You know, it's easy to take that for granted. But we need to understand that you can't disobey the king forever. Okay? So how does Satan do it? He nullifies God's word. He convinces you that you don't have to do what God told you to do.
Okay, you're going to get away with it if you just disobey. God understands. That's what grace is for. No, the Bible says that grace is there to teach you how to live godly lives. It's not there to give you a license to sin. Second Peter 2. I'm going to just read a few verses. Verse 1, 14, and 18, and 19. This is going to tell you how uh, false prophets and teachers will come to you to nullify Jesus' words, how they do it. So you can keep an ear out for this and an eye out for this, and so you can recognize that evil spirit when you see it at work. It says, But false prophets arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. These false teachers will infiltrate your midst with destructive heresies, even to the point of denying the master who bought them. As a result, they will bring swifter destruction on themselves. Their eyes, full of adultery, never stop sinning. They entice unstable people. They have trained their hearts for greed, these cursed children. For by speaking high-sounding but empty words, they are able to entice with fleshly desires and with debauchery people who have just escaped from those who reside in error. Although these false teachers promise such people freedom, they themselves are enslaved to immorality. For whatever a person succumbs to, to that he is enslaved. It's hard to say it better. Understand this is how Satan does it. This is how Satan's servants come to you and nullify God's word. They do it by speaking high-sounding but empty words. Now Jesus said that the person who is sent to you is going to come speaking God's words, the written word of God. That's how you recognize him. But someone who comes with arguments and theologies and philosophies that come from the Bible, that are ministers, but they encourage you to go after your fleshly desires, like, for example, your desire for money. Let's start there. Okay? They entice you by speaking these high-sounding words. What they're really doing is they're saying, oh, it's okay, you're going to have, free you have freedom. Go after the things you want in this world. Jesus didn't say that. He said, take up your cross. Deny yourself every day. That means say no to what you want and follow me. That's a different message, isn't it? And do you see how these high-sounding words nullify that message? That's what Paul said, that he didn't want to preach the gospel in words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Okay? So keep your eyes open for any spirit that is telling you that it is okay to disregard the written words of the king, that they don't apply to you, that you don't have to obey them, that it's not a serious situation when it comes to uh, disobeying the king. It is a serious situation. It's serious for your soul. Because as that scripture says, Jesus said, many people are going to say, Lord, Lord, I did lots of things in your name, Jesus. And he's going to say to them, with finality, leave me. Get away from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. Now, that should be a scary thought to us. Understand that the fear of the Lord, though it may be uncomfortable, it is a very good thing because it is the beginning of wisdom. It will keep you safe if you will understand that when you say Jesus is the Christ, that means he is the king and he must be obeyed. That is going to guard you from the spirit of Antichrist. So I want you to put this uh, principle to work this week, this marker. I want you to look for it. If you're listening to Christian teachers in your conversations, um, see if you can identify the spirit of Antichrist in any of those conversations and just mark it down. Maybe you should get just like a little journal. And just mark it down this week when you identify the spirit of Antichrist. And it's a lot better if you're identifying it in yourself than in other people all the time. But if it's another person that has influence over you, like a teacher or someone that you listen to or follow, then you need to identify that. And write it down and say, this spirit today was encouraging me to disobey this scripture. Maybe it's a scripture you've disobeyed your whole life. Right? And all of your friends have always disobeyed, and all of your pastors have always disobeyed, so you just ignored it all these years. You guys know the scriptures I'm talking about. You just say, oh, well, I just don't understand that. I want you to notice that instead of just kind of sweeping it under the carpet. Now is the time to let those be markers and say, okay, this is something I need to bring to God. I need to repent because I've been saying with my mouth, I confess him as Christ, but I've been saying with my actions all this time that I don't actually have to obey him. Those are the things you need to bring to him. You need to repent, and then he's going to cleanse you of your double-mindedness, and he's going to purify your heart of sin. This is the powerful word of God, okay? This isn't fairy tale stuff. This is going to work out 
some very real changes in your life if you will put them to work this week. And when you do that, let me know, okay? Use that email button and let me know the exercise that you're going through this week as you recognize the spirit of Antichrist and what you're going to do about it in order to get that out of your life, to purify yourself of that evil spirit.